Josette is in Trails in the Sky first chapter. Trails in the Sky first chapter is great. Josette is in Trails in the Sky second chapter. Trails in the Sky second chapter is great. Josette is in Trails in the Sky the third. Trails in the Sky the third is great. Josette is not in Trails from Zero, so how good could it be? Well, Trails from Zero is my favorite of the four games. I mean, it's not like Leagues Beyond the Sky series or anything. After all, Josette's not in it. And while a cameo from the Kapua delivery service is certainly appreciated, her absence is undeniably a demerit. So, how does Trails from Zero manage to edge out the splendiferousness of the Sky Trilogy? Well, the Trails series makes small tweaks and quality of life adjustments in each successive game, and Trails from Zero is no different. So, I could say the continued accumulation of gameplay improvements over multiple titles simply adds up to a better game. That's just math. It's also boring. Plus, a mere handful of expected improvements by themselves ain't going to be enough to spackle over the glaring Josette-shaped hole in this game. So what else does Trails from Zero bring to the table? Two things. It does a better job of involving non-active party members in battle, and it immerses players even deeper into the game world by further fleshing out the lives of its non-player characters. Let's talk battles. Like many RPGs, the Trail series gives players control over not just one hero, but an entire party of do-gooders with which to battle the forces of evil. Also like many RPGs, the Trail series limits the number of party members who can participate in a battle at one time. Got 16 people in your party? Doesn't matter. Only four can fight at once. Even if you're outnumbered two to one, you get four. Fighting a literal tank, you get four. But... When you're at the game's end, the fate of the world hangs in the balance and you're up against a giant, all-powerful, eldritch horror from the depths of Gehenna, you get four. So, what the biscuits are the rest of your heroes doing while your active party members are risking their very lives for the people of Zamoria? Are they just standing around with their thumbs in their bums? In some RPGs, yeah, but in the previous Trails games, generally the non-active members weren't physically with you. They were back at base, holding down the fort. In Zero, extra party members are present, but entered into support roles, which means that during battles, every few rounds, they'll jump into the fray with a special move ranging from physical attacks to healing and stat buffs for your party, and that's pretty cool. It's still weird that during the final boss fight, two of your party members are standing on the sidelines, cheering you on every once in a while, deigning to help you out with a quick attack or stat buff, but it does go a long way to making your non-active members feel at least somewhat involved in the proceedings. Now let's talk NPCs, the non-player characters that populate the various villages and towns you visit throughout the adventure. In many RPGs, NPCs are often not more than window dressing, or at best, information dispensers. Even if they mix up what they say throughout the game, they generally only ever comment on events specifically related to the narrative you're engaged in. Functional, but boring. What the Trails games do, perhaps better than any other series I'm familiar with, is they make the NPCs feel like real people with lives of their own, independent of you and your righteous quest. They have wants, they have needs, they have interests beyond the game's overarching plot. Nona operates a crepe stand in the castle town of Grancel and dreams of one day owning her own shop. And wouldn't you know it, there is one available in a nearby district, but... Before she can raise enough money, disgraced former Ruan Mayor Dalmore posts bail, moves to Grand Cell, buys the shop, and turns it into a Sepeth exchange. Poor Nona. I beat that game two years ago, and I still remember Nona, a random NPC. And that's part of the magic of these games for me. I come away remembering dozens of NPCs, their names and their stories. I can't think of another RPG that can make that boast. Now, Having said that, 
While known as a fun NPC with a memorable little story, she does feel pretty isolated from the rest of the NPC cast. Does she have any friends? Any family in Grand Cell? Are any of the other residents even aware of her existence? I don't know, and that's the case for nearly all the NPCs. So, how does Trails from Zero improve on this? Well, where the Sky Trilogy's NPCs feel like real fleshed out individuals, Trails from Zero's NPCs feel like real fleshed out individuals who are part of a community. Fran is a kind and bubbly person who works as a receptionist at the Crossbell Police Department. She's also responsible for delivering your paycheck. Her older sister, Noelle, is a sergeant major who works for the Crossbell Guardian Force over at the Tangram Gate near the Calvard border. During the game, you'll spot them spending their time off together at the Crossbell Anniversary Festival. If you enter a specific apartment on East Street, you'll find their mother who talks about her girls and how they don't visit often enough. Chroma runs a juice stand up in the administrative district. The lady who runs the grocery in the Times department store? That's her mom, and they often compete to see who can pull the most sales. Momo is the shy daughter of the folks who own Tally's General Store on West Street, and they're thrilled to see their little girl come out of her shell and play with Ryu and Henri, two neighbor kids who can't stay out of trouble. Do you get to know each of their families and how they relate to each other and everyone else? You bet you do! So, not only are the NPCs as fleshed out as they've been in previous games, but they feel like they're all a part of a thriving and interconnected community, and that's unlike anything I've experienced in a video game before. It is delightful. But... While Zero may be my favorite of the Trails game so far, it's not without its pickworthy nits. For example, while the support system goes a long way to make inactive party members feel like they're participating, it's sorely underused. While I appreciate the focus on the main cast, it comes at the expense of the guest characters who are only with you for a single dungeon, barely long enough to check out all their unique and entertaining attacks and abilities. Speaking of guest characters, it feels weird that our crew of newbies catch up to Estelle and Joshua's skill level in only a couple of months. Eh. And then we have Kia, the little amnesiac girl our heroes rescue in the second half of the game and subsequently shelter and care for. The game makes laudable efforts to dramatize the attachment the core cast develops for her over the short time they get to know her, but it didn't quite play for me. By the game's end, the protagonists are willing to go to the ends of Zamoria for her, and I'm like, meh, I have more of an attachment with Shizuku than her. And finally, perhaps the biggest issue with the game, no Josat. Ah, well, time to jump into Trails to Azure, but first, a few predictions. We'll never get to see the Crossbell tourist book Grace tasked us to take pictures for. We will get to play Pom Pom Party, that Puyo Puyo-like game Tio and Yona were playing in Zero. Support characters for Azure will be everyone from Zero, minus Estelle and Joshua, plus Arios. So, Waji, Risha, Noelle, Dudley, and Arios. The SSS will learn Risha is Yin. We will finally visit Mishiland. And... Shizuku will get a shiny new pair of orbital eyeballs. I stream on Sundays at noon Pacific Standard Time. Join me and see if I got anything right.